SJC 12947, Town of Concord v. Littleton Water Department. Okay, I'll get started. All right, good morning, Madam Chief Justice, and may it please the members of the court. My name is Brian Bertram, and I'm here as counsel representing the interests of the town of Littleton, and specifically the town's water department. As the appellant, Littleton asked this court to reverse the decision and final judgment of the land court. Now, as the court knows from our briefing, there is a core principle to Littleton's argument, and that is the fundamental difference between the subject matter of the 1884 Act and the Water Management Act. Now, at a high level, both of course speak to water, but each speaks to a different aspect as to how water users, such as the towns before you, go about using water resources. Here, the 1884 Act speaks to acquiring ownership rights or interests through taking ownership of Nagog Pond's waters. The Water Management Act, on the other hand, speaks to the regulatory authorization to withdraw water once that access, once that ownership is obtained. And unlike the 1884 Act, the Water Management Act, of course, is not concerned with these specific towns or with Nagog Pond, but instead with the statewide coordination through registrations and permits of cumulative withdrawal impacts across all users and sources. Mr. It's the Bertram, can I ask you, so how, how, would, how would this work? Um, Littleton wants to exercise its rights. Currently Concord has a registered um, use that it can keep renewing. How, how would you displace them? I'm not sure, and if not, I mean, don't you need to displace their registration rights under the WMA in order to exercise your rights to withdraw water under the 1894, 1884 Act? So isn't there an inconsistency there? Well, I, I don't believe so. I, I think, so first so tell, off- so Tell me how you do it. Well, I, I think there's a couple of ways we can do it. But first, um, because the 1884 Act is speaking to property rights, you know, we take, you know, we take the interests. I, I totally get that. You, both your rights and Concord's rights. I, Justice Cipher and I can't take water out of the Nagog Pond. You need some right to take water out of the Nagog Pond. So- How do you know I, get, I haven't been? <laughs> I, I get that. So how, how do we, I, I get you need those underlying property rights, but keep going from there. Well, I, well at that point, I'm a property holder, Your Honor. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, at minimum, I have all of the rights that a common law property holder has. So for example, I could go to court if I really needed to, and I could you know, mount whatever claims are available to me against Concord to pursue my superior ownership interest and to avoid an, inter, uh, an interference with my ownership interest in the God that, Pond. That's where I get confused, your superior interest, because they have an, a right, they have a registered right under the WMA. You have no registered right nor permitted right under the WMA. So how do you exercise, how is that statutory right from 1884 gonna be exercised in a way that's not repugnant to the WMA? Well, I'm a superior owner, Your Honor. Um, when I take, you know, the nature of the property interest that I have taken is superior. Um, you know, it's the same as anybody else who may have a concurrent interest in property. Um, you know, the, the Water Management Act isn't concerned with just this type of statutory right or this kind of statutory taking. It's concerned with property rights that are private in, in nature as well. So uh, if you imagine for a moment that you have two private property holders, one of whom holds a superior property interest, but may not have a registered withdrawal and wants to start withdrawing, I don't think anyone would argue that that person couldn't go and you know, pursue their superior interest so how, in the property. How, how did they do that under the, MW, the MWA? Because Concord has a superior right to you under the MW, M, M, excuse me, WMA. So how do you exercise your superior 1884 Act consistently with their superior WMA rights? Well, let me start by pushing back. I don't know that their rights are necessarily superior. There's nothing in the MWA the, the Water Management Act that 
makes a registration superior to a permit or vice versa. Now there's certainly less restrictions or conditions that DEP can place on a registration as compared to a permit. But I, there's nothing in the text of that act that values one over the other. Uh, but in any event- Well, but there is. If you have their, their registered right, they can renew. You have, no, you have no permitted rights whatsoever. And there's language in the WMA which prevents sort of withdrawals that are beyond the capacity of the POM, right? The so, safe yield, yes, that's yeah. correct, Your Honor. Right. Um, I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, again, my point would be is that we're not doing it necessarily through the, um, the Water Management Act. Um, well, but you have to transfer, I mean, can you transfer, can you force a transfer of their rights under the WMA? Well, I, I don't agree that I need to. I think that as a superior property holder, I could simply go to court and say, you're interfering with my use. I want to get a permit. My rights are superior. So you need to cease withdrawing to a level where I can go get my permits. You know, that's not through the MW, the Water Management Act. Um, but, they that, have, but, th but they're going to say, I've got a right on, I have a registered right under the WMA to withdraw this water. So you don't have any superior rights. You have some ancient property right that was displaced by the WMA. Well, that, that's the issue to be decided by this court, Your Honor. And in, I think deciding, that in deciding that issue, doesn't Justice Kafka's um, questions uh, suggest implied repeal? And if we go right to uh, the statute, right to um, uh, section three, uh, the statute says that uh, indicates its purpose is to assure comprehensive and systemic planning and management of water withdrawal and use in the Commonwealth. And I appreciate that your, your view that comprehensive is not the be all and end all of the analysis. But if we're trying to figure out superior rights under this 1884 act and how complicated it is, um, uh, how do we uh, reconcile that with the comprehensive nature of the water, um, water Management Act? Well, I, I think it's, it's pretty simple. I think that you know, the general court back in 1884 gave us a superior right to take. You know, if you go back to Section 10 of the Act, it contemplates us taking the same water that Concord may have taken in the past. And so we've taken it as a superior holder of an interest in property. And but at you know, this when we very go moment, at this very moment, um, Concord's rights to withdraw are superior to yours. And if that's going to change based on uh, the 1884 Act, that's really significant in the face of comprehensive legislation. Well, I don't necessarily agree. I mean, property interests change hands all the time behind these types of regulatory authorizations. Uh, someone can sell an ownership interest in land. Uh, someone could go acquire it. I, I think, again, we need to, to step back and realize that the Water Management Act deals with common law property as well. And certainly, um, you know, if someone leases or deeds a right to use water on their own property, but there's some form of, of trigger where they can go back and use it later, we wouldn't suggest that the Water Management Act, through creating a regulatory authorization for withdrawals, displace the underlying common law rights and interests in property. And that's what we're getting to, Your Honor, is that we are taking by eminent domain a property interest through this statute. And so while there may be regulatory authorizations that layer onto that, and we certainly don't have that authorization yet, what our argument here is, is that we would take by eminent domain, which is what the statute authorizes us to do, a superior property interest. And we think we could vindicate that in court to reduce Concord's withdrawals to a level that would allow us to get permitted within the safe yield to go to Justice Kafker's point. Um, but there may also be an avenue through DEP here. Um, you know, we have not gotten to that point yet. And you know, certainly DEP has never confronted a situation either where they need to deal with a superior property interest holder in terms of a registration or a permit.
So it's not repugnant to the WMA that you can um, push Concord aside despite um, the WMA's concern about protecting historical withdrawal? Well, I think you need to look to the text of the MWA in terms of what the concern was. Uh, you know, the only thing that they do with the registration is use it to determine whether it's a new or existing withdrawal. And the concern, if you go back to the history of protecting historic withdrawals, was to avoid lawsuits against the Commonwealth for cutting them off. Uh, you know, what's happening here, Your Honor, is displacing Concord isn't changing anything from before the Water Management Act. We always had the 1884 Act before the Water Management Act, and we always had that superior right. So I, I wouldn't agree that the Water Management Act was concerned with retaining existing withdrawals just because we wanted everybody to, to have their existing withdrawals. There was a motivation there. And it was to avoid that type of litigation. And it certainly wasn't to change the existing rights that had already been allocated and already existed under the special acts that came before or under common law property holdings. Um, you know, when, when you look at those motivations, they're, they're quite different. And I, I would suggest that before, at the end of the have, day. Before, before you go there, do we have to reverse or at least rewrite Fairhaven, which said, I mean, under your view, you say, okay, you have a superior right um, that some superior court's going to enforce um, that's going to require a readjustment or may require a readjustment in Concord's allocation book. But we didn't we say that Concord, as a registered, you know, with a registered right to withdraw water, can keep renewing it forever? Well, so the stat. The statute says they can keep renewing it, but you know the, the forever passage to which you are referring, Your Honor, appears sort of at the beginning parts of the case, and it's, it's describing how the Water Management Act works. And the issue presented in that case was solely within the framework of the Water Management Act. It was you know, whether DEP could put certain conditions on a registration. And mm -hmm. so in terms of that forever, you know, we don't dispute that Concord could continue to register um, under the provisions of that act. But, you know, what our theory of the case here is, is that under the 1884 act, uh, we have a superior right that's specific to this situation. Um, it sounds an ownership and different from the type of regulatory um, regulation of withdrawals. And, and that is superior. It does not, you know, it is not repugnant to the notion that one would register an existing withdrawal the sole purpose being to distinguish it from a new withdrawal, which might need a permit or have conditions. Um, you know, that, that really, if you, if you scour the text of the Water Management Act, so, is the but, singular but, purpose. But, but so forever, in your view, meant forever, unless someone with a superior property right brings an action to reduce your water amounts? Well, I think that would be one instance. I mean, Again, if I, if I own a parcel of land that abuts yours, Justice Kafker, and mm. you have some sort of property interest to use water on my land, but there's some trigger that allows me to take it back, I, I would be upset to have learned if we had done that before the Water Management Act, that the legislature somehow cut off my rights simply because you registered your withdrawals. And, you know, again, because the Water Management Act covers both these types of special statutes, but also private interests. We sort of need a principle that cuts across both. And, so, but and, tell me, and it's back to my original question. So how would we, how do you proceed then? So you go get your order from the superior court saying you have a superior right. Um, do you ask them to then transfer the registered amounts of water to you? What do you do under the W? Because don't you have you have to deal with the fact that they have rights under the WMA and you don't yet. So what do you, how do how do we do this? How do we take their registered water rights and give it to you? Well, I, I think the first thing we need to do is, is actually go to DEP. We need to do the taking, and we need to go to DEP to figure out you know if we're going to get a Water Management Act permit, what that's going to look like. And part of the problem with saying there's an implied repeal based on a registration is that that's based on some underlying facts that might change. You know, for example, one could find out tomorrow that the safe yield of the pond is actually higher than it is, and there's enough water for both of us. But if we hold that there's an implied repeal today based simply on, on what's being done now, 
we would actually cut off any right of Whittleton or Acton to access that water through a permit in the future, which wouldn't present any conflict. You know, but in any event, we would go to that. And I think you know, our, our first path there would be to see if there is some avenue through DEP to do that. And, and DEP hasn't weighed in on that. We don't know what they'd say because that's a little bit beyond the implied repeal issue in this case. You know, I know it, it's always the first thing that everyone's interested in because we're trying to conceptually figure out how this process works. Um, but we don't know how they're gonna deal with that. Now, if that didn't yield the result we needed, then ultimately, um, you know, we, we have a common law interest in property. And so if that withdrawal that Concord is making, whether it's authorized by a registration or anything else, uh, interferes with the use of our property, which is superior, um, you know, we believe we could go to a court to vindicate that right. It might be through an injunction or, or something else that wouldn't displace the registration. You know, you, the registration doesn't go away but it may mean that Concord simply can't withdraw to the level of its registration, that it need give way to our permit. And you know, in, in a, an interesting way, it almost serves the purposes of the Water Management Act better. Because if you look at that history, you know, what we're really trying to do is subject as many of these withdrawals as we can to DEP's management, to its conditions, to its conservation restrictions. Under a permit, we would have to abide by more of those conditions and more of those restrictions than a registrant would. And so to the extent there's an 1884 act or a, a property interest out there that stops Concord independently from withdrawing to the level of its registration, you know, which in the private context could certainly happen if you had two property owners, one of whom had some property right to restrict a withdrawal notwithstanding a registration, you know, that could actually end up being better from a water conservation standpoint than what's happening now. But okay. um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask if uh, Justice Kapker has had his no. question answered. Okay, let's move on to Attorney Roloffs. Thank you. Good morning. May it please the court. Uh, I would like to follow up on the, the questions that were uh, presented. Um, First of all, there's a few distinctions that I think need to be understood. Uh, one is with respect to a taking versus a withdrawal or a stripping of rights from Concord. If Littleton and Acton proceeded to take property rights pursuant to the 1884 Act, the taking itself is of property rights that would then be coincidental or common with Concord. That action itself does nothing to deprive Concord of anything that it has. In order to then withdraw water from Nagon Pond, any withdrawal has to comply with the Water, water Management Act, and it, large withdrawals would require a permit from DEP. That process is a, would be a lengthy, comprehensive re review process. One of the issues among many there would be the safe field of the watershed and the, and the basin that the pond is in. It has not been established that Concord is withdrawing 100% of the capacity of Nagon Pond. Yeah, there are scenarios. These are all factual. These are sort of a lot of what ifs issues. We got to decide sort of, you know, whether there's repugnancy here first, don't we? Um, and I, I guess, didn't the land court judge go a little too far here? Because you, you need that 1884 Act too, right? Because without that 1884 Act, you're like Justice Cipher and I just taking water out of that pond without any rights, right? So you need part of that act to still be in place too, correct? Yes, that is correct. Acton and Littleton are aligned in that regard. Acton's needs aren't so imminent as Littleton's, but yes, so it's only, a vital part of our... So only part, so the judge, the judge, the land court judge wipes out all of these special acts, right? Um, but you, we can't do that nor do you want us to do that, right? Because then you're left without any property rights in that pond, correct? That is correct. And related to that issue, I'd point out that under section 11 of the act, which hasn't gotten any focus, the Commonwealth itself reserved, the Commonwealth reserved to itself rights in Nagon Pond. So I just asked the question, if, we, if, if Acton's and Littleton's rights under section 10 are invalidated, judicially here, does that pronouncement also invalidate the Commonwealth's preserved, uh, reserved rights? 
Okay, but so let's 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 start focusing on the problem then. So there, we clearly have only a partial repugnancy here issue, right? We everyone we need to have <clears throat> underlying property rights established, right? Right. Like, if you had only a short-term lease to this, I, I guess that's, I get confused. Okay, so you had a leasehold right to this water for, for 10 years um, and they gave you a registered right. Would that expire? I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to understand how much of the act is repugnant to what we've got and how much isn't, um, but they're clearly, we've got some problems here because it's not an all or nothing issue. Um, it's not either totally not repugnant, um, nor is it you know, totally repugnant. So it's, I'm trying to sort this out in my head. So can they force the transfer of your registered rights under the act? Does the act for, have a transfer process? Uh, Justice Kafka, so I'm sorry, I represent the town <clears throat> of Acton, right? So um, okay. sorry. Okay. in my interest, sort of, Acton's interests are aligned with Littleton, but you're okay. correct that the registration that Concord secured, if, if Concord were acting under a 20-year lease term, and that term happened to coincide with the registration period, Concord went forward and, and obtained registration status, securing that status would not somehow expand the lease term. It does not expand its, uh, its, uh, its property rights. And, and in terms of the repugnancy issue, you're correct. It's only in certain scenarios where there is an apparent conflict between the objectives of the Water Management Act and you know, the allocation issues. There are scenarios that might play out where there is no conflict at all. In fact, well, I think well, the greater conflict. Well, we have a a scenario, which is that you're, com you're both competing for the water. The problem is, I thought you were, I didn't realize we're dealing with Acton next. So I'm sorry. I'll save some of these questions for Mr. Okay. Um, but uh, again, how does it transfer? So you want, do you have to transfer? Say, say there, there's not enough water here. Can you force the transfer of Concord's rights under the WMA? Um, do you have the capacity, because they have rights right now. How many years left on their registration? A number of years. Um, and if there's not a safe yield, do you have the right to transfer that under the statute? Uh, I don't think it's actually a transfer that would be, that would come into play there. And there's there a number of assumptions that were made in, in your questioning there. The safe yield question is something that would be part of the DEP review process that has not yet been established and it changes over time. Um, number two, with respect to it, it, the t neither a taking nor securing of a Water Management Act permit by Littleton or Acton would, would require a transfer of the registration rights from Concord. Only if DEP uh, ultimately concluded that there wasn't sufficient water to serve all needs. And if DEP then were in a position of issuing a permit uh, that would require Concord to reduce its withdrawals, that decision wouldn't be based upon a, a, a sort of deflating of the registration right. It's just an acknowledgement of the constraints on Concord statutory rights, just like in the lease scenario. So if during a Water Management Act permit proceeding, Concord's 20-year lease expired, DEP could more readily issue a water management permit to act in or Littleton because Concord's statutory rights no longer exist. So those withdrawals can no longer happen. It's, the priority there is, is based upon the statutory interest, not a, not a stripping of regulatory rights or reallocation of, of regulatory rights. But, but isn't your position Basically, the allocation of water is all going to be based on a hundred different special acts. Then, the prioritization of who can take what won't be done by DEP. It'll be done by, you know, the legislature in 1894, 1906, or 1937, and and we're going to have to sort out prioritization through hundred different special acts. Is that really what the Commonwealth wanted to have happen when they passed this comprehensive act? 
Uh, I, no, I, what the Commonwealth wanted was for DEP to take the lead in these allocations. And so with respect to all these special act property rights, if there are competing uh, property it, it, users that have statutory rights, because they're subject to the regulatory framework, it's not enough to have a statutory right to be able to access a certain water source. You need to go to DEP and also get their permission to do it. So DEP does have the regulatory control and ability to constrain uh, withdrawals, even if the underlying property rights would allow for larger withdrawals. So that, you know, this really should, by asking this court to reverse the land court judgment, we're asking the court to allow the Water Man Management Act program to play out by stripping Littleton and acting of their rights under the 1884 Act, you're essentially allocating 100% of Nagat Pond to Concord by way of a judicial pronouncement with no involvement whatsoever by DEP. So we're asking the court to protect the statutory rights and allow the Water Management Act process to then play out. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Let's move on to Attorney Durning. Thank you very much. May it please the court. I'm Attorney Peter Durning. I uh, represent the FLE, the town of Concord. Ten years ago, based primarily on the definition of an existing withdrawal in Section 2 and the plain language in Section 5 regarding registrations and their renewals, in Water Department of Fairhaven versus DEP, the court concluded that the Water Management Act guarantees that any registrant that registered its existing withdrawal and timely renewed its registration may continue forever to withdraw water at a rate of its existing withdrawal. I think in the dialogue that we've had so far this morning, that important concept that the Water Management Act instilled this new comprehensive system um, was deliberately constructed and I think it's important to note that while there's been some discussion of Littleton and Acton's rights under the 1884 Act, the, the language of Section 10 says that nothing herein in this Act shall constrain Littleton and Acton, but it also notes that they must hereafter be authorized to take. Uh, they have not so been authorized to take, and I believe in earlier submissions, they acknowledge that such an authorization would need to come through Mass DEP in the Water Management Act process. And I think that's where we get to the repugnancy. Uh, I don't think they're going to argue that. They're going to argue that you, by the way, we do have to cut back what the land court did, right? Because you need this special act yourself, right? You don't have any property rights in this or, or do you? I, I think we do insofar as you know, the, the act was adopted in 1884, some time passed, but in 1909, Concord actually took the rights and registered its rights. No, not hmm. registered its rights, it registered it, its eminent domain taking in the registry of deeds. And wouldn't, indeed, those, and, wouldn't all those be wiped out under your theory by the WMA too, because they're all if the, if the WMA is as comprehensive as you say it is, mm -hmm. doesn't that mean everything else doesn't matter? That DEP and the WMA c exclusively control water and its allocation, and none of these property rights that you that preexisted it have any meaning? That can't be correct, can it? I, I could concede that, uh, Your Honor, and I do think that for the, the purpose of this analysis and the resolution of this matter, uh, Judge Roberts' finding of repugnancy with respect to the 1884 Act, to the Water Management Act, would resolve the issue. And I would note in... Yeah, but, but, uh, but we've got, I guess we've got to deal with hundreds of these special acts, too. So our decision... I take it you want us to have a, a limited repugnancy finding here that the priority provision in the 1884 Act is repugnant to the WMA, particularly in that it's inconsistent with the registration that gives you the right to this water forever, if, as that, long as you renew. 
Is that is that the holding you want at least? I would agree with that, Your Honor. Okay, so then I'm trying to understand their property. What what does it mean for them if the statute stays in place somewhat, and they have a superior right of some kind? Yeah. I mean, if they have a superior property right, does that is it meaningless? For example, this were just a lease. If if Concord had only had a leasehold right to this property until 2020, and that lease expired, but the registration continued, would would you still have the right to that water forever? It is a curious hypothetical, Your Honor, and I, I don't think that the Water Management Act contemplated that scenario playing out of a leasehold interest. Um, but I, I do think it points to your earlier question to uh, Littleton, and that is that there is no mechanism within the act for the transfer that Littleton and Acton would be advocating for. And so there's um, no transfer, there's no ability to transfer rights under the act? There, there's, there's no mechanism for a permit holder to demand a share of the registrant's holding. There's no authority given to DEP to direct that outcome. What is, there's CMR 3608 and 3609. Mm -hmm. what, how, what do those do? So there are those transfer provisions. What, what are those provisions? They are, but they are, they're not self actuating and they're, they're, they're not uh, mandatory. And I would say that under the operation of the, the goals of the water management act and establishing registrations that the registrant holder Nothing, nothing compels them to transfer registration rights out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Turning, um, uh, your, uh, your position may be right, but it's, it, it's sort of remarkable. You're, 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 number one, you're saying, okay, we're going to take implied repeal here when the, when the uh, legislature knows how to repeal a statute, if it wants to repeal a statute. And the result of the implied repeal is that Two municipalities that adjoin a pond are, are at best inferior to your rights, and here you are not adjoining the pond, and you're saying that, that this statute changed property rights. That's sort of a remarkable position. There, there are other instances like this in, in the Commonwealth, Your Honor, I, I, and I, I don't find it all that remarkable. Certainly, uh, the water supply for the city of Cambridge, Taunton, and New Bedford, um, which are referenced uh, in these materials, are similar to the right that, that Concord exercises over Nagog Pond. But I, I do think, remarkable as it is, I do think that that's what the general court was setting out to do. It was recognizing that in ushering in the Water Management Act, there was going to need to be some realignment. Um, and with the additional constraints that were going to be put on permit holders, the compromise that they reached in that legislative bargain was to establish that concept of existing withdrawals and to protect those rights under registrations. So uh, they contemplated that Littleton, right, right having half the pond, um, it's right there, right, right in, right in the, uh, the town. They don't have enough water. They can't use uh, this pond uh, if, if uh, Concord isn't going to be able to satisfy its needs. And we have a clear indication of re repeal or repugnancy um, uh, in that circumstance, despite the fact that the legislature um, has uh, referenced and, and dealt with uh, special legislation um, uh, subsequent to the passage of the Water Management Act. Right. To, to that, Your Honor, I would say, as we acknowledge in our brief, that to the extent the legislature amended some of those prior special acts, 
It was only as to issues that did not involve water withdrawals. And as we note in footnote seven, our recommendation is that the former acts only cease to be operative so far as they are clearly inconsistent with the new act. But I think as our discussion went earlier, in, in order for the Commonwealth to set forward this new framework that would allow DEP to operate to control water rights and, and water withdrawals throughout the Commonwealth as a single hydrologic system, they needed to establish a, a baseline of, of how water rights were exercised and then to modify those going forward. And yes, in that legislative bargain, there were certain holders, certain existing withdrawals that did obtain some preference by the creation of registrations. The, 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 the creation of registrations in section five of the Water Management Act is significant, perhaps even remarkable, but the intention was to allow those existing withdrawals to be so protected. Uh, and I think the Fairhaven case bears that out in its analysis and its conclusion that be, because of the nature of the legislative history of this act, the time in which it was conceived coming out of the droughts of the 1960s, that it really was an ambitious plan that they were putting forward. So, uh, and, uh, uh, doesn't Fairhaven, at least as it relates to its holding, just deal with whether or not DEP can impose conditions concerning conservation without existing reg regulations? I don't see Fairhaven as some big statement resolving this complexity. I, I, I agree, Your Honor, that it was uh, focused on that issue of the ability of DEP to uh, impose new restrictions on registration renewals. But I believe that the, the discussion of the significance of Section 5 is material to this action. And as the, I believe it's in um, footnote 4 and the structure of the act itself, there is the only thing that Fairhaven recognizes and that the statute allows that can restrict a registration is the declaration of a state of water emergency in the Commonwealth. There, there's nothing written into the structure of the act that would provide the, the, the backdoor allowance for the holder of a prior special water right to obtain a, a section of a registrant's withdrawal, which the legislature could have done and the, and the regulations could have provided for that mechanism. Neither the statute nor the regulations provide that. So may, may, if uh, Justice Lowy is satisfied, um, in, in the course of your research, when you were looking at uh, the passage of the, of the WMA and the regulations that, that then were enacted, in, in any of that, did you see any legislative history or, or history of, or discussion of the regulations that referred back to the 1884 Act? To the 1884 Act specifically, no, Your Honor. Okay, thanks. Can I, how does this, but I'm just trying to get a sense of, you both realize that some of the 1884 Act has to survive. So Acton and Littleton take the property, which they'll, they'll do if we allow them to do it. They take, they exercise their right. Um, and then we have both this 1884 Act and the WMA um, in play. They're gonna argue their rights are superior you're going to argue that you have this register right. Would, do you agree that they could go to DEP and try to get permitted? Or they certainly can take their 100,000 gallons, right, without any problem. I'm just trying to figure out what they can do under your scenario. Can they take their 100,000? I Arguably, yes, they can take their 100,000, Your Honor. And can they go seek a permit as long as it's not inconsistent with your registered um, uh, water. They could, they could attempt to do that, Your Honor. Okay, um, so, so they can, it, it, what, it, so if we're a court, how would we decide that issue? For, say there's safe yield potential here. Yes. Um, can they go to get, use their, get a permit, as long as they don't violate your safe yield? If there was a permit that they could obtain that didn't violate our safe yield, um, 
that that could proceed. But okay, so as long so as our registration was secured, so the, the conflict would not give them any prior, priority right, Your Honor. So the only repugnancy is if they their permit would require you to lose your registration, right? That's where, that's the only repugnancy really in play under your view. Is that, or, or am I, I, the land court finds the whole, all the special acts repugnant, but I don't think any of you want us to wipe out all the, this special act, including Conquer, right? It, it is re repugnant insofar as it would take away from Conquer's registration, Your Honor. I agree with that. So the only issue that's, the, the prioritization is the repugnancy. Um, that's right. And I, and I believe that Justice Roberts found that in, in her decision as well, that it's the priority so, element of 1884 that is repugnant. So we could write a decision that's narrow that says statute, these type of statutes that define prioritization of use are inconsistent with uh, DEP, the WMA, which defines its own way of prioritizing, right? Now, I would agree with that, Your Honor. And that could be all we need to decide here. Is that yes, correct? I agree with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all set? Yes, thank okay. you, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel.